back on the tutorial for JavaScript on Brotherhood. And today we are going to cover um, two important concepts inside of um, the JavaScript um, engine on Brotherhood, which is going to be the creation and hoisting. Okay, this has a lot to do with the way the JavaScript is going to create and read variables and objects and um, not so much statements because the statements are being called as you start um, writing them in. Uh, remember, we talked about this in the last lesson. Um, statements are basically a set of instructions that you give JavaScript to do things that you want it to do. Okay, But variables and objects, however, are two different body parts of JavaScript, so to speak. And that are part of the construct of JavaScript, okay? And they get placed into memory and they have things in it. And, well, well we're going to talk about what happens when they get created. So, um, before we go any further, remember to subscribe, like, hit that bell button, and, you know, share with uh, all the people. And if you haven't seen our previous um, videos that are kind of leading up to this one, Go see those first, so today's lessons um, make sense to you. Um, otherwise, you're probably gonna get lost. Okay, um, a lot of these videos they kind of follow. Um, it's like a chain. It's a series, so I suggest that you watch the entire thing. All right, so let's get into this. Let's dive into it. All right, so the creation and hoisting um, in the in the JavaScript engine. Okay, when when the JavaScript engine reads your code, it knows to save some things into memory, okay, or into memory allocations, so to speak, so that it can recall them later, okay. Um, so these are the variables and objects. These are the ones that we talked about in the previous uh, videos, and as soon as you declare them, they get stored into memory so that they can be used later on, okay. However, there is a weird phenomenon that happens in JavaScript uh, that it often confuses a lot of people because JavaScript is, if not the only one, maybe, I don't know every language in the world, so I'm not gonna speculate and say that it's the only language that it behaves this way. Uh, maybe other languages do, but uh, I mean, you, you're welcome to tell me that in the comments. <laughs> but, um, but I know that it is at least one of them that behaves this way. Most other programming languages don't like this kind of behavior, and I'll show you what that means in a second. So, all right. So, um, so open up your um, Visual Studio Code, okay? And I want you to start setting up your environment first because we're going to be using this a lot, okay? Uh, so make your um, make two files, and set up a folder somewhere in your anywhere you want to want to use it, and set up an index file, index.html name and then just make sure you have something like this it's very simple uh, you don't have to have anything up here in the head in fact you don't even have to have it but just put html if you want the head then you can put it to not just take it off whatever have a body and inside the body um, put this script right here and um, basically point it towards a file that you're going to create it's called app.js so you're going to create another file right there in the same root app.js and this is where we're going to be we're going to be basically putting all this code in there. Okay, so once you have that, okay, um, any code that you put in there is going to show up in the browser. Um, if you haven't um, if you haven't um, downloaded the extension for Live Server. What is it? Live server. Right here. Make sure you do that because we're going to also use that so that your browser um, can um, automatically refresh and serve your files. Okay. We're not using the no modules or NPM or anything like that. So we're going to need a live server to in order to serve our file onto the browser. And I have a video and I will put it in the links. I will post the link. I have a video separate in my channel that I explain um, a lot of these extensions and Visual Studio and setting up your Visual Studio code and all that. So we're not going to go over this in this video, but uh, I made a video for it. 
So back to the code. So just to test that it's working, uh, we're going to do something simple as console log, and then we're gonna put hello in there. All right, we're gonna hit save, control S, save, and now you're gonna go to your browser by right clicking, assuming that you have live server installed, you're gonna go to your index, I'm sorry, you're gonna go to your index, and then right click and open with a live server. Once you hit open with live server, you're gonna get a browser window just like this, okay? Once you hit the browser window, I want you to right click and hit inspect, and you're going to get this window here. It may be detached, it may be on the right side like this, like it may be on the right side like that, okay? And that's fine, if you, if you want it over here on the side, that's fine. I technically, I like it a little bit. I like it in the bottom, actually. So I just put it in the bottom, and I move my screen over to the side. Now, once you do that, hit console, and then you should have the console right here telling you hello, which is basically what we instructed it right here. Now, if you're wondering, or if you want this to kind of make sense um, to you, this is what? It's not a variable. It's not an object. Technically, it's a function, but it's more like a statement. So this is one of the three things that we talked about in the last video. This is a statement. It's an instruction. It's, it's a set of instructions that I'm giving JavaScript to tell it. I want you to log it in my console, you know, to reach my console, and then with the data operator, this is the data operator. We're going to go over this eventually in the future, in, in other lessons, in future lessons. Execute this function, which is the log function, and as a parameter inside, I have this right here, which is, you know, a message basically. But all of it together is kind of a, it's an, it's a statement, it's a console log statement, and that's what you get here. Okay, so now we know that it works. Now we can actually start, you know, we can delete that, and we can start actually putting some code in there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk to you about, I want to show you how this phenomenon that I was telling you about how it works and why is it so weird. So we're going to start with a variable declaration. We're going to use the var for this. Um, eventually we're going to get into the different ones like let and const. But for right now we're just going to use var. So I'm going to declare a variable, name it a, and I'm going to basically store a string in it and it's going to say hello from, from, hello from var. There you go, hello from var. And then in here, I'm gonna create a function, okay? So this is not an anonymous function, it's gonna have a name. I'm just gonna call it hello funk, hello funk. And oops, and I'm going to, inside the function, put another console log. And if you have Emmet in Visual Studio Code, if you type log, and you notice that little square here that tells you that there is, you know, log to the console, whatever. If you hit log and then you hit enter, it automatically puts a console log for you. So that's pretty cool. It's, uh, this is something that Visual Studio does for you if you have Emmet in it. And I believe that Emmet comes out of the box uh, with uh, uh, Visual Studio Code. So um, use it. Sure. Why not? Now in here, I'm going to put uh, hello from, from function. Okay, get that space out. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my function. And this is an invocation right here. When you create a function, you can invoke it by just name it a parenthesis, okay? And then I'm also going to now console log this A right here, okay? So console log A. So I have one JavaScript to, to invoke this function that I created up here, and I want then after that to console log this value that I created up here, okay? So if I hit save, what did you see? You see hello from function, hello from var. In that order, I created hello var first, and then I created hello from function, okay? So lexically, that is, and, and again, we're going back to the lexical, um, environment and the content, uh, the execution context, okay, 
Lexically, we created this first and then this one, but the execution context happens a little bit differently. The execution context in, call this invocation first, therefore it executed that, and then this one. If you were to do this this way, it will follow the exact order of the execution. The execution context will follow the exact order of the lexical environment that I already have set up here. This one first, this one first, this one second, this one second, okay? But it's whatever, okay? That's not a big deal. That just goes to show that even though you have a different lexical environment, the order that you call things matter, okay? This right here will matter. If this one would depend on the on the res on the output of this, if this hello function was supposed to produce something that you will later need in this one, it will make sense in, in the order that you put them in, in the order that you execute the context. Okay, so just keep that in mind in the future when you start um, making um, a little bit more complicated and, and lengthy um, pieces of code. So this is cool. This is exactly what we expected. Okay, hello from function, hello from var. Now let's see this. Let's for a second let's delete that. Let's call it up here. Like I said earlier, in a lot of other languages out there, this will will give you an error right off the bat. There's no way that any in other languages are going to say, well, you want me to execute this, but I haven't got that far yet. You want me to lock this, but I haven't got this far yet. Okay, I don't know what it means because you haven't instructed me yet what it is. So therefore I can execute something if I don't know what it is. Well, JavaScript is actually a little bit smarter than that when it comes to that. So if I say this, I get hello function and look at this, I get undefined. Now you're probably thinking, well, if it's so smart, then what the heck happened here? I mean, it already, you know, failed in the variable. What well, did it though? Did it? Did it fail? Let's see. Let's see if it failed. So what JavaScript did here is called hoisting. Okay. So JavaScript, when the function is created or a variable is created, you know, variables and objects are created. JavaScript puts them into memory and they make them readily accessible for you. No matter whether you call them from ahead of time or you call them after the creation of it. Okay, that's what it's called hoisting. And I think JavaScript does a fantastic job at doing this and it makes it really helpful. Although you shouldn't really rely on it, it is a good thing that it does this for you. So this is what hello function did. Hello function, when it tried to run, it realized that it existed in memory, okay? And because it existed, it was able to give you back whatever was in it. Now, what was in it was nothing more than just a, um, a, a statement. There was nothing that needed to be processed or calculated in memory. Therefore, it was easy for that function to run and execute, you know, on the on the fly, even 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 though it was declared after the invocation. However, the console log it noticed that there was a variable defined or not defined but a variable was created and it did it ran it what it didn't run though was the value of it the value is the one part that it does not know until after it gets there so what it did for you is it said javascript said okay i see you created a variable and i'm going to put it out there that you created one i just don't know what it is yet so in the meantime, I'm going to put it up there and I'm going to give it a value of undefined. Now there is a reason for this and that's the way the JavaScript works. JavaScript initially sets all variables to undefined until you give it the variable that you want. And this has a lot to do with the scope. Okay, The reason why JavaScript doesn't want to initially give this value to something until after it's actually being used is because there are many ways that you can use a variable especially when you start bringing let and const into the equation or into the deployment field so to speak um, it has a lot to do with the way that 
the day scope within the function block or within an actual block of code and whether they are like const for example that they're not mutatable so all of these different things that I just said right now that will make sense when we actually start talking about variables will will make the code behave a little differently so JavaScript doesn't want to pre define these these values when they're called by hosting because they don't know how these values are going to be used whether that a is going to be used as a let or as a const and then that's going to create different things so in order to avoid all that and play it safe all it's going to do is say okay I see your creation and I'm going to tell you that I created it and that I and that it is in memory it's available for you however it is not defined yet until you actually use it later and then call it okay so just to make um, um, to, to, to get a little bit more into what's happening here let's see for example so because one thing I want to mention is a lot of people see this undefined and they think that undefined means um, it doesn't exist or, or, or it's non-existent or something like that and it's not okay it's it's not it doesn't mean that it's not existent okay so it's more like it's kind of like this it's kind of like this it kind of it kind of told JavaScript it, it, it not told JavaScript but JavaScript is telling us that it just sees the declaration only not the actual value okay so that's more of what actually happened okay so so um, so when it comes to the execution um, content you have to um, you have to remember how this is going to how this is going to be running for example in this function right here if I were to add another variable inside here and that's probably a good uh, good way to look at it as well so I'm gonna put this one here and I'm gonna call this one hello um, hello I am C how about that All right. hello I am C and then I am going to console log this one so now if I run it look at this I got hello function and then I have I'm telling JavaScript hey give me hello function okay great here it is hello function hello I am from function and then I'm telling JavaScript okay now console log the A and it didn't instead it did this one and then it went down to the console log A and the reason why I ran this one is because this one was inside here now what is what is JavaScript doing here and this is why this it makes sense for you to follow these videos in the order that I'm kind of putting them out is because this has a lot to do with the execution context okay when JavaScript starts reading your code the first thing that is going to see in your execution content is going to be that hello function okay it's going to be this one and then and then it's going to say okay I am going to run this one and as I'm running this one I realize that in there I see that there is a few statements that I need to do I need to run this right it says, I don't need to do that uh, that the console log I'm going to call it log1 and then I see that you're also telling me to console log this so I'm going to console log that one I'm going to call it log2 okay and then I see that there's nothing else to do so I'm going to close my hello function and once I close the hello function the hello function falls off the stack of the execution and it you know basically got to here and it jumps right back to where it was left to where it left off and it's gonna run the log 3 which is going to be I guess this one right the console log it and that's how you get this order here okay so that's that's what I mean by the context uh, the execution context that we're talking about now while we're messing around with the execution context and this variable here if we do this right here we're also going to get an undefined because I am calling it 
before I declare it. So it's still on the phone. So this right here, this hoisting not only can happen at the when at the object at, at the window object at the furthest point out, but it can also happen within a function itself. You can also hoist within the function and you will still get that undefined. So um, that will hopefully give you a better idea of how this works and we're eventually going to get to see a little bit more of this as we go along uh, through the classes. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to tell you before I wrap this, uh, this uh, lesson up is um, you do not want to um, rely on hoisting. Okay, It's nice to know that hoisting exists and it's there and it's fine. However, it's not a good idea to rely on it because, like I said, um, all variables are set to undefined when created. Okay, so as you start using it in in with operators, for example, with operating functions, that you actually do need to calculate its zero or false value into the operating system, and you will see more of this when we get to operating functions. Then then you start running into trouble because it will give you the results or output that you were not really expecting. So don't de really depend on the hoisting ability of uh, JavaScript. Instead, it's better if you try to run or try to follow the execution context in the construct of, of your lexical environment. So if you know the execution context is gonna run it this way, build your lexical environment to kind of be as close as possible as that execution context is going to is going to run naturally that way you don't run into any issues of calling something prematurely and setting up uh, a bunch of undefined values that you're not going to want um, later in your code it just prevents a lot of bugs okay so that's all i have for this lesson and we'll have more of this in the, in the next lesson so just stay tuned and Again, subscribe, hit the bell, share, tell everyone. See ya.